Today I'm going to take you through installing an integrated dishwasher. Hi folks, welcome back to the show. I'm going to whiz through this one as quickly as possible because if you're anything like me, you've already had a good search around online for how to install this. You've realised that the instructions are a complete waste of time and you just want to get the job done. This is a Bosch integrated dishwasher, but you know, the instructions between different brands are very similar. As I say, the instructions aren't great. I struggled for quite a while to work out just what height the dishwasher was supposed to go at, since I'd always assumed that it gets pressed up tight to the worktop, but then it came with this little card that seems to show a massive gap above the dishwasher, which I didn't think you were supposed to do that, so I'm not sure what that's about. As per usual, this is just my approach to installing a dishwasher. Do follow the instructions that came with yours. A couple of little bits of preparation I've done in advance. First of all, I've screwed some timber to the floor down there just to raise it off the ground slightly because otherwise you end up having to have the legs so far extended that it can make it a little bit unstable. This particular dishwasher ha only has three legs on it. I think the ones with four legs are a bit better, to be honest. I've also taken the door off the adjoining unit just while we push the dishwasher into place, but we'll put that door back on in a minute. And we've got a brand new dishwasher door ready to go on as well. In terms of prep within the cabinet, I've just got the water supply there ready to be connected up. The power supply is just above it there, and I've cut the hole in the base of the cabinet. The hole has to be big enough to fit this through, so it needs to be a reasonable size hole. And what I also like to do as well in under sink cupboards, because it is possible that you're going to get drips of water and things under here, is that anything where I've cut into the cabinet, I've painted the edges with a varnish, and I'm also going to silicon the edges of this cupboard as well. So if there are any leaks in here, it doesn't get into these gaps around the sides and start turning the cabinet to mush. So, first thing is just to get the dishwasher obviously pushed into place. Obviously make sure your hoses don't have any kinks in them, but you should have plenty room underneath the unit for any slack to be bundled up out the road. I don't have the waste connected up yet, so uh, I'm just going to kind of leave that there for now. That looks happy. And then we can pop this door back on because we're going to need the doors on to get everything aligned. You need to make sure that your doors on either side of your dishwasher are in exactly the right position because we're going to use these as a reference to get this door in the correct place. Before we do that though, we're just going to level up the dishwasher and to do that on this particular one, there's a screw here that controls the back foot and then you've just got these annoying kind of feet at the front to twiddle. This is a brand new kitchen and granite worktops or quartz worktops are going in here. If you've got wooden worktops then you need to fit this little protector underneath your worktop before you fit the dishwasher and it's just so that any steam and things out the dishwasher don't start to cause problems for your wooden worktop. But because we're having a quartz worktop we don't need to bother with that. But do check the instructions. You literally just kind of attach it to the bottom of the worktop. It's not particularly complicated. Very quickly talk about some of the bits that might have come with your dishwasher so you know what everything is. These bits here are for attaching a plinth section onto the front of your dishwasher. We're not going to bother with that because we've got a run of plinth all the way along the front. So we don't need a separate bracket on the front. So we're not going to bother with them. 
These are little brackets for attaching the door on. We're definitely going to need them. We're going to need these little plastic bits. I'll show you what they're for in a minute. We've got these little Velcro sticky back bits. We'll need those. These slightly shorter uh, posi drive screws are for attaching the dishwasher into the side of the adjacent kitchen units. We are definitely going to need those. They are to attach these little brackets onto your door. These are for attaching the door onto the dishwasher itself. This is to attach the waste pipe onto your waste coupling, which we don't have the waste coupling yet, so we'll do that later on. And these little nails here are for that little bit of metal that goes under the kitchen worktop if you've got a wooden worktop, which we don't have. So with all that in mind, let's fit these that I should have fitted earlier. So to put these in, you'll just need to pull the dishwasher back out if you've already put it in place like a wally like me watch your doors these bits just go in the side of this here but they are adjustable so that you've got no play either side of the cupboard so if you've got a little bit of a bigger gap then uh, you've got a little bit of adjustment in these so basically measure your gap between these two units and make sure that from there to there is the same distance it should be 600 millimeters but it isn't always depending on who fitted your kitchen. Obviously I fitted this, so it is 600 millimeters. As I say, the instructions are a little bit vague as to what height the dishwasher should go at. So I'm gonna go with the top of the dishwasher door being in line, pretty much in line with the cabinet doors. And that generally seems to have it at a comfortable height where this top seal will make contact with the worktop. So if you imagine once the worktops are on there, you want there to be a nice kind of seal at the top there, but you don't want it to be too high, otherwise your dishwasher door might catch on the worktop itself. So with all that in mind, now's a good time to prepare your door. And that means making sure you've got the handle fitted and it also means if it's a brand new door like this, decide which is gonna be the inside. This already has a sticker on saying which side should be the inside because I think that with this, they select which is the best side. Uh, so this is the outside. And also if there's any damage on the door, any marks or anything like that, you're probably best having that at the bottom. So pick which is gonna be the top. I think we'll have that as the top. So that means I need to fit the handle on there. I'm gonna do that first. I'm not gonna show you me fitting the handle because that's not what this video is about. It's worth mentioning as well that unless your handle happens to line up perfectly with this little gap at the top of the dishwasher here, then you should counter bore your screws for your handle at the back just so your screws don't rub on the fascia of the dishwasher. Then mark your midpoint of the door on the back. So to do that, I'm gonna mark 30 from either side and then I'll split the difference between those two. 30. It's much easier doing that than trying to divide 597 millimeters by two or whatever it is. Then, if you are doing it the way that I'm doing it here, where the top of this dishwasher door is in line with the top of the cabinet doors, then this bit is easy. If you've gone for a weird height, then you're gonna to have to use this template thing to mark off what the height of your dishwasher door is. And you basically have to align that to the top of the worktop and put a mark on the corner there. But because we're going in line with the top of the door, all we need to do is align the top of this piece of paper to the top of the door. So make sure you've got it the right way around, obviously. Handles at the top there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna align the centre mark on this template with a centre mark that we've marked on the door, which is in there. We'll make sure we're flush at the top. And then we we'll also need to make sure that the centre mark on the bottom is correct as well, which we can't actually see because it's too big. Isn't that just brilliant? So I'm just gonna tape that in place so it doesn't move. 
It's dead on centre there. It's always a little bit tricky because this bit of paper isn't exactly flat. Then get an awl or a nail will do if you don't have one and we're just going to mark out all the screw positions. And then we'll just need to drill a whole bunch of pilot holes no deeper than about 12 millimeters I think is the suggested depth so Two millimetre pilot holes and I've set it, well, I've set that about 10 millimetres in my drill just to be on the safe side. Obviously the, the idea is that you don't go all the way through the door. Then we just need to install the little brackets at the bottom here. If you are going to use an impact driver or something, be very, very careful. I would suggest you do this by hand if you've never done this before. It's a Torx T20 bit that I'm using. I'm only going to start the screws off and then I'm going to tighten them by hand in a minute. Make sure the back of the door is immaculate. Want no dust, no greasy finger marks or anything like that. And we're gonna measure 155 down, 45 in. And just put a little cross or something like that. 155 down, 45. And that's where the top corner of our little velcro pads are going to go. So this one, the top right corner is going to go against that little mark that we've just put there. And on this one, the top left, make sure those are well stuck on. Then double check your door tops are definitely, definitely all in the correct plane, all in line with each other. We're all good. It makes life a little bit easier if you pop a straight edge over like that, but be careful it doesn't fall. Get your door. Again, make sure where the sticky pads are gonna be going, your dishwasher's nice and clean. Take the backing pads off. Hook in. The bottom brackets, in there. there, it's pretty logical where this is going to go. Sometimes it's a bit easier if you open the door first. You can make life a little bit easier for yourself if you very gently clamp the door like that, let's stop it falling off. Then, Torx bit again, we're gonna remove this screw, oops, careful the dishwasher doesn't fall over. This screw, this screw, and this one's already out, so we don't need to take that one out. On both sides. And we're gonna replace them with the long Torx screws that came with it. You should find these going relatively easily into the pilot holes that we did. You might need to just very slightly tweak the position until it lines up. And once again, tighten them up by hand. Do not over tighten. Game over if you strip the thread out of the wood.
Then you can take off the protective seals that are on the side. It's like a blue protective tape stuff. Door shut. Check everything is absolutely perfectly in line. This is a good time to get your straight edge out and run it over the top of your doors. And if there's any last little bits of alignment to do, you can just adjust the height back or front, move it left or right a little bit if you've got any play, just to get it absolutely perfect. But that is literally millimeter perfect there. I do need to actually adjust this door very, very slightly. It's the door to blame, not the dishwasher. But once you are sure the door and the dishwasher are in the correct place, then you can attach it into the cabinet just through, being very careful not to move it while you open the door, just through the screw hole there and screw hole there using the leftover posi drive screws that I've got kicking about somewhere. At this point, you would generally refit your plinth. Now, I can't do the final plinth yet because I'm waiting on an end panel for the kitchen and I can't line stuff up until I've got that end panel. Um, but I'll give it a quick try and just check what I'm gonna be, what I'm gonna be in for. Yeah, we're just gonna need tiny little bit notched out at the top of the plinth there. I'm gonna do that separately because as I say, I can't fit the plinth yet until we've got this end panel. But it's just a little bit that needs to notch out so the door can open. And once that's notched out, I'll also paint that with a little bit of varnish over the top as well, just to protect it from moisture. Actually, second thoughts, I was just being lazy really, and uh, I've sorted the plinth out so we can actually declare this job pretty much finished really. Obviously I can't connect the waste up yet because the sink's not connected. So I can't show you it working, but it is, other than the waste, it's all ready to go. It's worth checking that all the seals around the edges there are all kind of flipped outwards properly because sometimes when you push a dishwasher in, sometimes they get a little bit caught. So just check your seals on both sides are all hunky-dory. I'm no dishwasher expert, but I'll quickly take you through first time use so that if you're watching this and you just want to get up and running, then you can be. Let's have a look at what's in this little bag of goodies, first of all. So we've got a couple of uh, quantum power ball things and I presume that's Rinzaid. So I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, this thing is for if you take the top tray out and you're going to be washing like uh, baking trays and stuff like that. It tells you in, in the instructions what that's for. Um, I don't think we've ever used that, but um, keep it somewhere at the back of a cupboard just in case. This funnel thing is for when you add salt, which again, I'll talk about that in a second. So hopefully you've got the instructions and you can go through your own instructions that came with yours and work out what you need to do for the initial configuration of the dishwasher. I think with modern day three-in-one tablets, you can basically just uh, use it straight away. You should do a clear cycle first. It says to do a cycle on the highest heat, let that run its course, and then you're effectively free to just use it as you want. But there's a few things that you should really go through here to do with setting your water hardness and rinse aid and whatnot. So I'll quickly cover that off. But if you're in a rush and you're not in a particularly hard water area, you're probably safe-ish to just kind of use it. But do look into what you have to do here. So it tells you, first of all, add some special salt. And the special salt, so dishwasher salt, um, you use this funnel thing and it goes in the bottom of the dishwasher in the salt location. It tells you in here where that goes. It's going to vary depending on the model of your dishwasher. The salt is all dependent on your water hardness and the water hardness indicator or the water hardness table is here. And you can look up for your water board 
for your area what the hardness of your water is. Now interestingly for where we live it says that we have slightly hard water but it says that the water hardness is only seven degrees E or seven on the clock scale or something like that I can't remember either way according to this seven is in the soft range so I'm going to assume we're in this kind of region here where you have to set the dishwasher on either H00 or H01. The key thing is really if you're in an area of the country where you have really hard water then you need to set this uh, setting accordingly because it goes all the way up to H07 if you have water hardness of like 62 degrees E or whatever. So if you have really hard water this is something that you do need to take quite seriously so you don't have problems with lime scale and all that sort of thing. For us, it's less of a concern, especially since we're gonna be using three-in-one tablets anyway. So I think what we're gonna do is just set it on H00, which basically switches the salt system off, and it means you don't get reminded to add salt all the time. And then when it comes to rinse aid, which it says page 26 of rinse aid, I think it basically just means that if your dishes are coming out slightly streaky, then add more rinse aid and it tells you what to do here press the power button open the basic settings press setup for three seconds and the display will show h and then a number and then uh, the display will show set and then press setup for three seconds repeatedly until it shows an r number and i think if you have it on r005 or r05 it switches the rinse aid reminder off, I think. Don't hold me to that. But if you're not having any problems with streaky glasses because you've got three-in-one tablets and the rinse aid in the tablets is cleaning your glassware properly, then you can probably switch the rinse aid function off so you're not getting reminded every two seconds to put rinse aid in. But if you find that glasses are still coming out streaky, even with three-in-one tablets, then you might want to also add rinse aid in. It does say in here somewhere, the function of rinse aid is limited with combined detergents. You will generally get better results using rinse aid, so separate rinse aid. So that goes in a little place in the door you just open the catch next to where the detergent goes and shove it in and that's kind of it. And I presume it'll remind you every now and then to put more in. We're going to leave those off. Uh, I don't see any point unless we run into a problem with streaky glasses or we suddenly move to an area with really hard water. So as I say, add the special salt, add the rinse aid, switch on the appliance, Set the water softening system, we're gonna switch it off. Set the amount of rinse aid, we're gonna switch it off. Add the detergent into the little detergent thing. I don't need to explain that to her. And then uh, start the program with the highest cleaning temperature without table wear and run it through one cycle on the highest temperature and then that is it, ready to rock. So folks, that's us done. I hope you found that useful. We have one functioning dishwasher. We're one step forward to having a functioning kitchen after a year of living in a temporary kitchen. If you've got any of your own tips for fitting dishwashers, post them down in the comments below. Anyway, do hit subscribe because I will genuinely let you know if we run into any major problems later down the line, I, I will let you know. But uh, yeah, there's only so much I can talk about dishwashers in a single video, I guess. Take care, folks. Look after one another. Be nice to each other. We shall see you next time. Tally bye.